Falsus MJB3 mask liner. This system has a 200 watt arc lamp and the arc lamp is installed in the lamp housing here. I have turned on the lamp uh, just to warm it up and the procedure to turn on the lamp is after powering up we have to wait for about a minute till the system boots up. When it indicates ready here, press the start button and the system will start firing cycles and once the lamp ignites it will show cold and it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for the arc lamp to warm up and once it stabilizes uh, we can set the constant power mode or constant intensity mode and uh, we can pressing on constant power mode for more than five three seconds we'll say display here display set level and we can adjust the power level so once right now the lamp is in constant power mode the the system has a microscope and got a nice CCD camera attached to the microscope and we can see the image of the alignment pattern on the, mic on the display unit here. Once you power up, after hooking up the facilities, The unit requires compressed air, about 7 bar, about 80 psi, anywhere between 60 to 70 psi is adequate. And the 25 inches of mercury vacuum line, and also about 3 bar nitrogen, about 15 to 20 psi nitrogen is adequate for this system. When the system is shipped, it will be shipped with this uh, pneumatic box attached to the unit. But the camera, the microscope, and the lamp will be disconnected from the system for shipment purposes. There will be tie wraps and brackets installed on the uh, microscope manipulator module uh, so that the system is secured during shipment. The system controls over here the power switch to turn on and turn off the system. And the switch here is uh, for selecting the mode, either HP mode or standard mode. And there is a button here to choose in standard mode, either soft contact, or when this light is not on, it is standard mode hot contact. And there's a vacuum mask switch, which will enable to turn on the vacuum to hold the mask on the mask plate. Here's the mask plate. And once you release the vacuum, we can take out the mask. I have a dummy mask here with some patterns on it. So once you load the mask, and secure the nuts, these two screws here will tighten the mask. It has to be firm all the time. And here is the substrate holder for three inch wafers. And the substrate holder has a silicone gasket here which enables to use this chuck for HP mode where there is a vacuum contact vacuum generator between the substrate and the mask 
using the ceiling surrounding it. And position the wafer approximately in the center. Slide it in. And then the lever to raise the substrate is on the left hand side over here. So rotate the lever counterclockwise. So this is the lever to raise the substrate, bring it in contact with the mast. And this one, this lever is the separation lever. So when you slide it to the front, there is a gap generated between the substrate and the mast so that the alignment micrometers can be used. This is for y-axis, and there's an x-axis knob on the right-hand side, and this is for adjusting the cable. The microscope manipulator has two buttons on it. The top button enables the y-axis moment, and the bottom one enables the x-axis moment. When both the switches are not pressed, the manipulator is locked in the position. So this enables to lock in where the alignment marks are. So once you lock it in, there's some dark pattern on the substrate here. I'm able to move it. So we can view through the microscope when this lever is all the way in. And this one is dual mode. You can align it through the microscope and also have this video image. And this is only the video image. Now once the alignment is done, press the exposure button. And make sure that this UV shield is in the groove so that the reflected UV rays are shielded properly. So right now I'm running an exposure in standard mode, hot contact. So the lamp tower slides forward and the exposure begins. There's a digital timer here. I've selected about 11 seconds. Once the time is up, the power goes back. And make sure that the microscope is moving up and down properly. And gently rotate the contact lever clockwise. And now you are ready to load another sample. Now I'm going to do it in soft contact mode. What happens in soft contact is the vacuum under the substrate stays on and only mechanically it is pushed up against the mass. The substrate is pushed in contact with the mass. And in hard contact, the vacuum is released under the substrate. and the nitrogen pressure pushes the chuck off against the mass. Now that exposure is over. Now I'm going to do a HP mode. In HP mode, once you select the HP mode and load the sample, make sure that this nitrogen is on. This is the purge nitrogen and press the vacuum chamber. And this is the vacuum chamber vacuum level here, which could be adjusted to the desired contact vacuum. So the vacuum is canceled out by a little amount of nitrogen so that you can have a very high, high vacuum contact or a medium level. 
the highest possible is almost 0.8 millibar and they can lower it up to even 0.3 so once at any point of time to release the vacuum sliding the separation lever will release the vacuum here so just in case if we want to realign it again there are needle valves like this on the system for adjusting the speed of the power movement they're over here on the left hand side and the manual explains how to adjust the pressure if it is necessary So I'm using a 405 nanometer detector here and measuring the intensity and in order to operate the system in constant intensity mode, first we have to tally the energy levels with an external meter that is indicated on the constant intensity power con lamp power supply CIC 500 Now, so this is a set level for constant intensity mode. I can increase it to 17 milliwatts. And now the power supply is, uh, is at a higher wattage. It was 170, now it is 190 watts and the energy level increased. And the CI2 is 405 nanometers. And now we can also verify with this 365 nanometer detector. So now the 365 nanometer is indicating about uh, 10 milliwatt per centimeter square. And there is a procedure to measure the uniformity of the lamp. And if there is a variation, there are knobs on the back side of the lamp housing which need to be adjusted in order to pick up the power. The procedure is indicated in the user's manual. Now I can select the constant intensity mode and set it at a, for the 365 nanometer level, if I choose the constant intensity level, the power decreased to reduce the intensity. or we can increase it so 
so the power increased and the value matches 9.4 milliwatt. Momentarily pressing the BS switch switches the display from wattage display to 365 nanometer detector and the other one. When it is in constant power mode, we can switch it. So now the constant intensity detector one is enabled, that is 365, and this one is 405 nanometer. The microscope has three objectives on it, and I'm focusing it. That is a point X, and it's a five X here, and a ten X. So that's the condensing lens here and the arc lamp. The arc lamp has to be installed with anode down and this is the cathode connection. So these uh, knobs here, they move the position of the arc with respect to the reflector on the back and the condensing lens so that we get a uniform beam. There's a procedure in the user's manual. Rotating this knob moves the condensing lens forward and backward. And always make sure that none of these electrical wires are touching to the chamber walls. Severe damage could occur to the power supply if that happens. This is the power supply control. The system power, in case of emergency, if you hit the emergency switch here, the whole unit power is shut off. The output of this power supply goes to a, a distribution module. And once you turn on this switch, turn the F3 switch to on and toggle this to position 1 to turn on the main power to the machine. The microscope uh, illuminator is a fiber optic illuminator and there is a filter in line to the to this light so that UV light from the illuminator are not exposing the substrate. There is a Z height control potentiometer right under the Y axis positioning knob. This helps to raise the substrate up or down to accommodate the thickness, various thicknesses. Once you make sure that the substrate is uniformly touching the mask. We have to lock this knob in position. 